all of these factors that I have and that, you know, that I, and the point that I'm at in my career right now, it's just given me that extra boost and that extra confidence to know that I can still go out there and tick off the goals that I have for myself. Um, and now this fight is, is about that, right? It's about yet again, separating myself from everyone else and making myself undeniable again or continuing to make myself undeniable. And, and, I, and I feel like the way to do that is to go out there and, you know, silence that Perth crowd once again. Oh, first of all, introducing our challenger. Out of the Avalua corner. He's going to step in and he does. It's all over. Let's bring on the boom. This is Eternal MMA. All right, everyone, welcome back and thank you for joining us here once again on another edition of the Eternal Insiders podcast, powered by Fight HQ. Fight HQ, the official uniform partner for Eternal MMA. You can visit fighthq.com.au for all of your combat sports, training and apparel needs. And with that, we welcome in today's guest. He needs no introduction, but he is the former Eternal MMA featherweight champion set to make his return to Eternal MMA when he takes on his old rival in Rod Costa at Eternal 87 in an epic tie-breaking trilogy match that we cannot wait for. Absolutely psyched for this one. Justin Lockjaw Van Heerden. Justin, long time no talk, man. Uh, how you been, brother? It's uh, it's damn good to have you back. Yeah, it's been a minute. Man, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back doing this. Happy to be chatting to you. Um, you know, because obviously when we chat, that means I've either just fought or I've got a fight lined up. So exciting times, man. I'm, good to, I'm just happy to be back. Excited to be back on Eternal. Excited to be fighting on a massive stack card that's like, you know, going down in Perth again. So yeah, it's good. I mean, I'm in a very good place. No, it's good to have you back as always, brother. And we've spoken a few times in the past. Uh, you know, obviously you've spent a large part of your career here at Eternal MMA, um, not least as the Eternal MMA featherweight champion. So we've had some great conversations in the past and I always love getting your thoughts and feelings on everything with mixed martial arts and certainly about your career. So very cool to have you back. Um, you know, in terms of fighting for Eternal MMA too, man, I mean, you your last couple of fights have been uh, outside of Eternal MMA since you were the featherweight champion uh, for the brand. Um, I know, obviously, your last fight uh, coming off a loss, which is, of course, uh, disappointing for yourself, uh, but selfishly as an Eternal MMA fan, uh, very grateful to have you back here. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of returning to the promotion once again? Yeah, I think, obviously, I mean, in the initial sort of when, you know, I made the decision to, to, to bounce and kind of pursue a couple of fights elsewhere, I think in, in the first sort of initial, you know, period when that was going down, I think people had like the misconception that there was like a, this, you know, divide between myself and Cam and Ben, and maybe there was like, the, like I burnt some bridges or something like that. And I guess as time went on, and especially once I, you know, did a chat, a couple of chats where I kind of opened, opened the sort of the lid on everything and kind of shared, you know, the process, I think a lot of people um got to see that you know that wasn't the case like it was just a circumstance of i had an opportunity to pursue a couple of fights elsewhere um did that and you know it made sense for me now to sort of return to my you know my home where i'm used to fighting and, and you know kind of um where, where like you sort of said where i've kind of built myself up heaps as a as a mixed martial artist and you know where i kind of spent the majority of my career so yeah and obviously you know that relationship that I have with, with Ben and Cam is, is still really good and nothing's going to change that because it's a, it's a mutual kind of open two-way street where that, which, which, which is kind of like what it's always been. And, you know, I've got a lot of respect for both those guys and I like to think that, you know, that, that goes both ways as well. So no, nah, it was a no brainer, man. After my last fight, like you sort of said, coming off a loss. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, a, it's a loss on paper, but in terms of, where I'm at, how it affects me and my career and my stock. I don't really think I've lost a step. I thoroughly believe I'm still the number one unsigned, un unsigned featherweight, you know, in the oceanic region. Um, and I can sit here and, you know, have like that sort of Monday morning quarterback thing of being like, uh, maybe, you know, I could have sat and waited, seen what happened with Perth, whatever, but I just not built like that, man. I took a, I took an opportunity, uh, you know, I took on a, another talented sort of um, mixed martial artist. He was able to capitalize, you know, for what, like 30 seconds in a fight. I made a mistake and, you know, got caught. Shit happens. You know, you run that fight another, you know, you can run that fight a hundred times. That's the one time where 
I messed up and, and got caught. I feel like, uh, yeah, outside of that, it's just, it is what it is. I don't feel like it's affected my stock, man. I, I thoroughly believe I'm still the top guy in the, in, in the region. And, and, you know, I feel like I've done the work to put myself in that position. As you sort of said before, I ventured outside of Eternal for these last couple of fights. You know, I was the featherweight champ. I was on an absolute, you know, tear. I was on a win streak with multiple finishes over top featherweights. So, um, yeah, to me, it's just now about resetting, getting back in there, um, you know, getting back in the cage for Eternal and then showing the potential that I have and, and showing the, the level the level up that I've, you know, sort of had yet again. Because um, the last time I came off a loss, I went on an absolute tear and showed that I was leveled better and, and did the work to improve. And this is an opportunity for me to do that again. No, and I think it's important for people to remember as well that, uh, you know, while you are coming off a loss, you are eight and 10, you know, or you said, sorry, you are eight wins out of your last 10 fights, uh, you know, for your sort of record with your last few fights there. Uh, of course, you know, outside of this one, the last loss you had was against Rod Costa. Um, and even the couple of losses that you had sort of on your record early in your career were outside of your weight division. So everything's sort of stacked up in terms of what you present uh, with, with a very impressive record. Um, there's still so much to like there and you're still basically sort of in the fighting prime of your career. So I think there's still so many cool things to come in your career, man, that we're certainly looking forward to. Now, just coming off of that recent fight that you had, um, obviously that's not too long ago. And here we are uh, being locked in with a trilogy fight uh, against Rod Costa. Uh, can you tell us about sort of how soon that became an option to you? Can you just talk to us a bit about uh, how that fight sort of got put together and what were your initial thoughts on that becoming a reality? Um, well, yeah, this would be my third fight in four months now, I think. So back to that usual strength of schedule that I'm used to, um, obviously after having like a year off and, you know, not having any fights. Um, but no, nah, basically, yeah, pretty much the, the next morning after that last fight, um, you know, I was just having a conversation with Cam and kind of, you know, he floated the idea of like fighting in the, on the Perth card and was like, you know, would you be keen to like, how's, how's the body? And I was obviously, like I said, come out of the fight with no injuries, mm. um, no, no dramas or anything like that. So it was straight back to training on the Monday. But uh, yeah, the next day after the fights, he was kind of like just having a conversation, kind of floated the idea. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, talk to talk to my manager, talk to my coach and let's 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 make it happen. So um if that's you know see, see what the options are and then uh i think like a few days went by or maybe a week or so went by and then um ben vickers messaged me and was like uh hey who do i send um a fight offer through to and i passed on my manager and, and that's details and was like you know and he was like you know i've got a fight for you for august just want to flick it through and then i pretty much went to the gym i think that next morning or that afternoon and uh Joe and Tara were like, you've been offered Rod Costa to fight on the Perth card. You've been offered that trilogy. So Sam Carter said, um, what do we think? And it was like, obviously, it's a no-brainer for me. Um, there's that competitive rivalry there between Rod and I. It's the night before the UFC. Um, big occasion, big weekend. You know, there's a storyline there, obviously, with the trilogy, with us being one apiece and knockout over each other. Um, and, you know, that's the kind of shit that people want to, you know, want to sort of see and latch on to and especially you know with the ufc brass going to be in the building the occasion of it all like that's it just it just adds to it all right like i feel like it's the perfect fight to have right now um it's just you know obviously stylistically it's a it's a great fight because it you know rod's not coming a point fight rod's not coming to like cruise his way through the fight he gets after it i get after it um you know and we both we both sort of have that, you know, that win over each other. And we're, I'm, I'm sure he's just as hungry as I am to go out there and, um, you know, end this trilogy with in the same sort of fashion because that's certainly what I plan to do. So, yeah, come together pretty quickly it was, and it's a pretty easy conversation. I've said it before. It's got to be like the easiest fight to throw together if you're a promoter, right? It would have been like a phone call, yep, and a phone call, yep. And then, you know, next thing you know, contracts are sent out, signed, and the fight's on. So, yeah, I never really... I never really thought at any point um, that he would like wouldn't fight or anything like that. Like obviously, I knew I know he said in a couple of interviews that he was keen on a rematch with um, you know for the bantamweight title, which I understand. Um, and then I think that he, you know that wasn't going to be possible till like October or something. So I think yeah, that, that was kind of added to the motivation for him to take this fight at featherweight. 
with me, obviously that, you know, it's, that, that benefits him as well because you're fighting at featherweight. So you're not doing a cut to bantamweight. weight. You, you know, he probably doesn't have to cut that much for featherweight. I think he sort of said that before. It's not too much of a struggle. And then, you know, say all things go well, or maybe regardless of what happens with the fight, maybe he still gets the opportunity to fight for the bantamweight belt again in October. Then, you know, it doesn't affect him too much. So, but nah, it was an easy fight to put together. It was an easy process and it come together pretty quickly after my last fight. So, yeah, I'm keen, man. I'm keen to go in there and, and do my thing and, you know, blow this guy out of the water and, and sort of uh, announce my return in a real big way to, to Eternal. I love it, man. Let's get it. Um, you know, in terms of that, with Rod saying that he was keen on, you know, wanting to get the rematch for the Bantamweight Championship, I know, of course, that'll be at the forefront of his memory, but he has said in interviews recently uh, that the fight with you is one that he wanted to get back, uh, given that, of course, you guys are one-on-one, uh, but the most recent memory, of course, is you beating him in the second round by knockout. Uh, you guys now holding a knockout apiece uh, over each other. Like prior to this one getting put together for the trilogy match, did you have any sort of thoughts of that? Like in any stage of the last 12 months that, hey, look, I beat this guy in emphatic fashion. Um, you know, I, I've gotten one sort of back over him. Was there any part of you prior to this being made and thinking like, surely we've got to do one more in the future because uh, we, we've got to end this rivalry. Someone's got to be uh, the king of this rivalry at the end of the day. Um, not really. It's just, it's come together based on circumstance, right? Like let's, let's, let, let's, let's just call it like it is. Right. I think everyone can fucking agree that when I won the eternal title, um, there was a massive argument that, you know, I could have been picked up by a big promotion and should have been signed. I then sustained an injury when I was meant to headline the last card they had in Perth before the UFC. I had to wait. There was a delay in my year and I fought Rod in June of that year, rematched him. He was the current Bantamweight champ. I was the current featherweight champ. It was a rematch. Both of us on win streaks, both of us on the tear. You know, obviously we know what happened there. I obviously went in there, did my job, knocked him out. Um, and then, you know, so I could sit here and just be like, look, obviously in my mind, I was like, after that fight, especially I was like, that's it. You know, I've done the fucking work. Like I've done what you're supposed to do to earn your shot to, you know, to go, to go to that next level. Um, you know, just, based on a few, I don't know, weird sort of situations. It, it seemed like it was that was happening and then it didn't come together. Um, and then obviously, you know, there was a bit of time outside the cage. I got back in earlier this year uh, in May and kind of, you know, got another win, added to my win streak. And then, uh, you know, in my mind, I was like, I was like, yeah, I've, I, I already, you know, I already had another fight lined up. Um, but I was like, in my mind, I was already thinking like, yeah, you know, I'm going to get a phone call like any day, like, next couple of days for sure i'm getting a phone call like i've done the fucking work right like i'm active i fight whoever's in front of me and i'm putting people away and i'm finishing you know i'm finishing people i'm beating people so i was like yep sweet um you know and it just obviously it didn't work out like that so you know it's just it is what it is you kind of just have to like keep going so nah i didn't really ever think that i was gonna get to have a trilogy with with rod uh or anyone for that matter. Obviously, there's the uh, there's the potential for a trilogy with Diego, similar situation where it was like he's got to win over me, I've got to win over him. Uh, but nah, it's it, it just come together based on circumstance. And but it's it, like I sort of touched on before. It's just it's it's the perfect fight to have right now. I feel like you know it's a it's got that storyline, which is something that you know promotions across the board love to see. They love storylines. They you know, it's, it adds to the sort of occasion of it all. Um, and, you know, it's just, I feel like it's, it's a good fight and a good opportunity for me to go out there and do my thing and, and do it in front of the right, you know, the right eyeballs that are going to be on me on that night. Um, and I feel like if I go out there and repeat what I was able to do the last time out, I put myself right back there, man, right back at that, you know, that, that level ready for that, ready for that next step, man. Because like, even looking at the landscape after this, I got there and, and, and run through Rod you know, I'm not going to fight my teammate. So, and then, you know, two of my teammates are the other two top, feather, like some of the other two top featherweights in the country. So, um, and then outside of that, you know, I've beaten everyone else. So it's kind of, yeah, it puts you in a, an interesting spot. I feel like if I go out there and do my thing and secure another big knockout or another big finish, um, yeah, I'm kind of right back there. And then, and, and, you know, I, obviously I, I'm, I'm still early days in my career. I feel like, man, I feel I've been blessed so far up in this point in my career, you know, I've, I've not sustained many injuries. I've not taken much damage. I've not, you know, I've not had some of these things that are commonplace in our sport. So, you know, I feel like I still got a long career ahead of me and I, and, you know, my sight's still set on, 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 you know, 
ticking off that other goal that I set for myself, which which is a world title. Like, uh, no, and I'm in a perfect place to do it. So, yeah, it's about me going in there and performing on August 17th, you know, putting Rod away and then just sort of looking at the landscape after that and seeing what, what the next likely and, and best option is. I know you're a man that needs no extra motivation or anything like that, you know, gearing up for a fight, especially considering, I mean, you touched on your strength of schedule that we're sort of used to seeing you uh, preparing for fights over the last couple of years and everything. But I mean, everything you just mentioned there in terms of, you know, thinking you might be getting a phone call, I think like you've put in the work, you know, which you more than have in this country, as far as always being ready to take that phone call, always taking any challenge uh, that's in your road, you know, putting on that incredible 12 month run that you had from 2022 to 2023. Is there an extra chip on your shoulder now for all those reasons? Like I know you sort of take your in the comes and everything happens for a reason in your mind, but are, are you carrying that extra like chip on your shoulder? As I said, coming into this one, do you feel like this is something that makes you even more dangerous than ever? You know, like, do you feel like you're sort of owed something in that regard? Like, does it, has it changed your sort of mentality in terms of how you approach your fights now at this point in your career? Yeah, one thousand percent. Obviously, I've I've had a chip on my shoulder from you know from the start in this thing in in this sort of game. But yeah, especially now, like that's if anything, that's just gotten bigger. And I'm not like I said, man. I'm not coming into this fight to point fight and play around. Like, I'm coming to knock this dude the fuck out. Like I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not here to mess around. Like I'm gonna blow this guy out of the water and show that I deserve to get that opportunity to go and fight the top people in the world. Join my teammates and some of my friends in the UFC or these big promotions, you know, and, and get my opportunity to represent Australia, represent South Africa and, and, and chase down that goal that I set for myself, right? I've always spoken about this, like the two big goals was win an Australian title and then win a world title. I've ticked off the Australian title. Now it's about winning that world title. So, you know, I, I, I feel like I've gotten better fight to fight to fight and I continue to get better fight to fight because of the, you know, the environment that I'm in, the people I'm surrounded with, the coaching that I have, like, the, you know, the, it all trickles down, right? Like the coaching I get from Joe, the example that's set by my teammates, the, the people I'm in the room with, the people that are constantly coming through the door at freestyle, um, the relationships that you forge with, you know, with like some of the people from like other teams, like CKB and stuff, obviously there's that, you know, there's that camaraderie there as well. So, you know, it's all of these factors that I have and that, you know, that I, and the point that I'm at in my career right now, it's just given me that extra boost and that extra confidence to know that I can still go out there and tick off the goals that I have for myself. Um, and now this fight is, is about that, right? It's about yet again, separating myself from everyone else and making myself undeniable again or continuing to make myself undeniable. And, and, I, and I feel like the way to do that is to go out there and, you know, silence that Perth crowd once again. Um, you know, there's a couple of things I want to talk about there too. Uh, you know, j just in terms of, uh, you know, coming into this fight with Seb, of course, on the card, you're wearing your teammate shirt there. Uh, Seb Salai, he'll be in the main event uh, against Dim Skillies for your former featherweight championship. I did just want to ask you first, so in terms of the guys that you're saying coming through the door, I noticed over the last couple of months and on a video that you put up recently, uh, my man from my hometown, it was not my man because I know him personally, but he's from my hometown, Jimmy Crete. Uh, down here in Bendigo, Victoria, uh, training with you guys up at Freestyle MMA. I think I saw you hitting the pads with him uh, on Instagram recently. Uh, what's that been like having Jim Crute, big body in the gym there? What's he been like in terms of mixing it with you guys? Yeah, man. Fucking, I love Jimmy Crute, man. I love when he's in the in the gym and on the mats, bro, because he's just, yeah. Obviously, he's like one of the coolest guys you could possibly meet just in general, but also, you know, he's just a super talented athlete. Big guy, big body, you know, big, strong, athletic can do it all, can grapple, can wrestle, can strike. So, yeah, I always thrive on um, whenever I get to sort of do stuff with, with, with Jimmy and, and kind of interact with him. And it it just, um, it allows me to, you know, sort of learn from the stuff that, that he does and, and kind of add, you know, the stuff that, that I feel like I can utilize to my game. And at the same time, you know, being the fact that, you know, he's a big light heavyweight, I can kind of get after it that bit more and you know i really have to rely on you know my timing being on point my technique being on point you know being aware of where you know my body's at being aware of what he's doing because you know he's got me covered for size strength you know so i've got to you know really be on when i'm when i'm sort of moving around with him so yeah i feel that benefits me tremendously so when i get in there with someone that's like in my weight class technically then you know i feel like it just gives you that extra bit of a sort of confidence and a boost because 
you know, you're doing work with, 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 with talented, talented mixed martial artists like Jimmy and, you know, everyone else that we have on the mat at Freestyle. Like I, it's a, yeah, I say it all the time, man. I, like when I walk through the doors at Freestyle, I'm very rarely, uh, there's very rarely sessions go down where I feel like I'm the hammer. You know, I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm the nail most days, but that just comes back to the level of talent that we have in the room. So, um, yeah, it all adds to it. But no, nah, it's certainly been a fucking awesome time having Jimmy in the match, man. I, I just enjoy when that dude's around. And it's just not good energy. It's just a good dude to be around, you know. The banter just sort of is just there. He's just, yeah, he's just a fucking sick cunt, to be fair. Yeah, to be fair. I mean, I've only met him a couple of times, but he's a great dude. So it's very cool seeing uh, someone from my hometown mix it up in a great gym like Freestyle MMA. I mean, you just talk about the people that are in that gym in terms of you being sort of feeling like the nail more than the hammer more often than not. I mean, you look at the caliber of people that are in that gym. Obviously, you know, Alexander Volkanovsky, former featherweight champion yourself, former Australian featherweight champion. I mean, you know, Jim Crute's a former champion in Australia. I mean, you've got uh, Seb Salai challenging for the belt. You know, in this card, I mean, you've had Amina Hadea recently challenged for a belt. Jarrett Wilbraham's challenging for a belt shortly. Like, there's just so much in terms of, like, championship fights, gearing up for championship fights, people that have been in championship experiences. Like, how could you not evolve at all times, um, you know, in terms of your game from that, man? It's, uh, it's an incredible situation that I imagine you must find yourself in. And just, you know, speaking of your teammates and everything too, man, like, one thing I wanted to point out that I think is a very important thing to highlight for yourself is just how unselfish you are as a teammate, uh, I know, obviously, we talked about you had fights outside of Eternal uh, recently down here in Victoria. I mean, you had a chance to take away your opponent, Jared Wilbraham's uh, opponent, uh, to, to give yourself a title fight there, which you said no to, uh, to keep him in a fight. You've got Seb now challenging for the Eternal MMA belt, which was previously your featherweight belt. Now, I know, being the good teammate you are, man, that you're well and truly behind him. You're in his corner. You've been giving him all the encouragement in the world. Given where you're at in sort of your part of your career now, are you free from any sort of mixed emotions being in that point? Considering you were the featherweight champion for Eternal MMA, this could have been a spot you're being in. Um, but are you free from sort of any kind of mixed feelings in terms of being in that spot and, and Seb kind of going into this and sort of being the next man in line from your gym to fight for that title? No, it's um, for me, it's awesome. I feel like when I made the decision I did to step away from Eternal and pursue those two fights, you know, I've kind of, uh open the door to give in a roundabout way to sort of create an opportunity for um you know my teammates to to to, to sort of pursue these other sort of bigger fights and get these opportunities so i'm stoked man I, i'm i'm stoked that you know steps fighting for this belt um and getting the opportunity to sort of fight for a title go out there and showcase his skills add to his win streak um I believe if he goes out there and, and beats Dimps, which I'm very confident that he's going to, you know, that it'll be, I believe that'll be like six fights in a row that he's won. Um, you know, winning an Australian title puts him in a really good spot, man. Puts him in a, in a, in a really, really good spot for some big opportunities. Um, and the same thing, with, you know, with, with Jarrett, like it's a, he's in a really good spot as well. You know, he goes out there and does his thing. He's in a really good spot. So, I'm just stoked, man. I feel like we're all right there. You know, we're all right at the top of the game right now. Um, and for me, it's, 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 bro, it's like, it's crazy to look at the, the level of talent that I have around me and then now seeing them pursue these big opportunities and getting to be part of that, being part of the camp, trying to give them the best possible looks. Like, you know, it's, it adds back to my own pursuit of what I want to do because I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing them do the things they do, which then kind of reinvigorates me to keep pursuing what I want to do. So no, nah, there's no like mixed emotions or anything like that. Like I, I said it when I um, made the decision to step away from internal for these last couple of fights, I said like it then, like if anyone deserves to fight for the featherweight title, it's, it's seb has got to be the person. And it's just about finding out who's, you know, the, the, who's the most likely person to challenge him for that belt. And I said it at the time, you know, you had like Gabriel uh, and, and Seb could have just fought for the featherweight title and you could have had Oliver and uh, Dimps as like a number one contender fight or, um, you know, someone like Diego or whatever. Like, you know, there's a, there's a couple of matchups that made sense to, to, to figure out like a, someone to challenge for the belt. But in my opinion, that, 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 that first fight in the Grand Prix for Seb, like that fight with Gabriel, that could have just been for the featherweight title. Um, and then, you know, we could be seeing him, you could have been seeing him make his first title defense against Dimps on this card. Um, 
yeah, but you know, it still worked out good. Like he's gotten the opportunity to be part of a historic sort of Grand Prix for the featherweight title. So um, yeah, it's all coming, it's all come to fruition, and it's all come to fruition at the right time and in the right way. So yeah, it's awesome, and I get to be there. I get to be there on the night, not just like you know, not just as a, as someone that's going to be in the corner. I get to be there on the night, uh, fight on the card, set the tone for the night, get that first win for freestyle, and then switch from kind of put everything, all that sort of stuff aside and just be there for Seb in any capacity that he needs me to be there and do whatever he needs so he can go out there and do his job. And, you know, we can we can sort of go out there, get the work done and, and, and celebrate a successful night for the freestyle team. No, again, just uh, highlighting just, yeah, what a selfless teammate you are, man. And that's just sort of the biggest, I guess, point that is in just you're thinking beyond your fight. You know, you want to get your fight done, get the win for freestyle MMA. Still a big focus in your career, and still everything that you want to achieve in your career, but then just sort of thinking about your teammate in his spot uh, at the top of that bill uh, is very, very gracious and very sort of cool to see. Curious on your fights. Like, I know you're a big MMA nerd outside of your own career in terms of looking at fights and that sort of thing. I know you love the scene here, love looking at the UFC. Like, your biases aside for Seb uh, coming into this fight, I know that's hard, but, like, how do you sort of see this matchup? Like, Seb's got that crazy cool style, man, as far as being, like, a karate fighter, but mixed with this, like just blitzing power in his hands. Like it's a combo you just don't see too much of, especially with the specifics of his footwork combined with the power and the speed. Uh, and, you know, and then you just got like an animal like Dim's Gillies that's just like, you know, I mean, he's game. Like you see the look in his face in the last fight that he had. Like it's just two clashing of just these like monumental styles, like from a fan's perspective. It's very cool to see. I'm sure obviously you know in your mind that Seb's going to win, but like what, what do you think it takes uh, for Seb to get the job done and capture the featherweight title that was once yours? Um, you yeah, know, I can give you a completely unbiased look at this fight and break it down stylistically. So, like, obviously, Dimps is very game. The dude's got heart for days. And, you know, he'll just keep coming. Like, you've literally got to knock that dude out completely, put him unconscious. Or, like, if you're grabbing an arm, you're grabbing a leg, or you've got to choke, like, you know, you've got to, like, break an arm, break a leg, put him, put him to sleep. But he's just going to keep coming forward and keep doing what he does. You know, he makes it gritty. He makes it dirty. He's got very fast hands. He throws, you know, he throws punches in bunches and he just he just keeps coming forward, right? Um, obviously, when you look at it stylistically, uh, Seb's got more tools. Seb's got more ways to win. Um, I feel like Seb's, everyone knows Seb's sort of credentials when it comes to the striking realm in his karate background and his team was able to do on the feet. Um, but I think that last fight, he kind of showed a, a, a little bit as well of, you know, he is a well-rounded mixed martial artist. Like I know he hasn't had to like, he hasn't really gotten to show that in terms of like showing what he's able to do, you know, when it comes to the other disciplines of the sport with like the wrestling and the grappling, but the dude's a very well-rounded mixed martial artist. Um, I see that. I get to see, I have the luxury of being able to see that every day. Um, but yeah, in terms of even just, if, even if it, you, you remove the, the wrestling and the grappling and, and you take the, the fact that this is an MMA fight out of it, and you, you look at it just for what it is on the feet, I still feel like he's got more weapons and more ways to win and more tools to use. And that's just, you know, that's just how it is. It's, this isn't a knock on Dimps, but Dimps is very one-dimensional, right? Dimps is a guy that comes forward, relies on, you know, the fact that he can just push a pace and keep coming forward. And, and you know, he's just going to keep punching and keep throwing bombs. And, and you know, he's shown that he's got power. He's got, he's got grit. He's got determination. He's got heart. So um, he's able to make the fights ugly and be able to sort of stay in people's space and, you know, get the, the the fight to a place where he excels and, and he's been able to do that quite well. And the fights where, you know, maybe that hasn't worked or hasn't sort of come to fruition and, and led to a victory for him, it's because people didn't allow themselves to get drawn into that, right? And that's that's what it comes down to ultimately. You, sh you just can't get drawn into a barn, your barn burning brawl with this guy because that's where he excels and that's his world. Um, but I feel like Seb's footwork, his you know, his timing, his rhythm, the fact that he mixes in everything, like his kicks, his ability to blitz, his, you know, he's got fast hands. It just, if Seb goes out there and utilizes 30% of his skill set in the way that I know he can, this is going to be a very, 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 very winnable fight for him. And it's going to be over very quickly. But in saying that, you've got to overcome the hurdles and the roadblocks that someone like Dims presents. And, you know, he's certainly not an easy fight. He's shown that. He's shown that he's, um, you know, someone that you've got to, like, take seriously and, and do the work for. 
you can't just think that you're going to show up and, and, and run through this guy. Like you'd be doing yourself a disservice. So yeah, it's certainly, and it's certainly a winnable fight for Dimps as well. If Dimps is able to do what he did in his last fight, especially, and, you know, kind of draw Seb into that, make it dirty, make it gritty and put a pace and just keep coming forward and just, and just keep throwing hands and the volume and just overwhelm and make it, make it that type of fight. You know, he can go out there and do the job and, and get the win. So, um, I'm under no illusions that this fight's, you know, got the potential to be like super, super, super competitive and go the distance and, you know, just be an absolute, absolute mental fight to sit there and watch as, as a, you know, as someone that's like a fan of the sport. But at the same time, I'm very confident that my teammate's going to go out there and, and, and you know, do the work that he, he he's able to do and, and excel and capitalize on what he's able to capitalize and, and just, you know, put this dude away. High praise for your team out there in Seb Salai, man. I mean, just like an incredible fight at the top of an incredible card. I mean, in terms of what we've seen with the incredible cards Eternal Maze put out recently, you combine that with the fact that, you know, as you touched on the UFC being in town on the same weekend, like it's going to be one of the biggest combat sports weekends that we've seen in Australian history. I mean, Dim Skillies versus Seb Salai for the featherweight title, David Martinez versus Harry Webb, just like another cracking fight, you know, under that. Frank Yankowski versus Colton Kilbasa, you know, for the flyweight title under that, I mean, two trilogy fights in the same card for fuck's sake, you know, like how often does that happen? We don't see trilogy fights very often, but Jack Becker versus Aiden Aguilera, you and Rod Costa, I mean, just an absolute crack of a weekend, man, you know, right on top of the sort of the UFC there too. And speaking of, man, you now obviously a lot of big names coming in uh, for this one too. Uh, I'm curious to get your thoughts just on the main event for this one. Um, Cause you know, of course, uh, Drickus Duplessis, like a fellow South African, Israel Adesanya, a man that you're more than familiar with because of the relationship that Freestyle MMA has with City Kickboxing. Are you just sort of sitting back and you're just going to be a fan of this one? Like, is your mind leaning towards an allegiance, you know, in terms of your fellow countrymen versus someone that you probably know quite well? Like, what are you sort of thinking in terms of this main event? Because, I mean, it's uh, like as a fan's perspective, this is this is a crazy one. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a sick main event to have. And it's obviously like, it's a, it's obviously very cool. And very, you know, awesome to have like a South African champion that's, you know, going out there and um, showing people that are, you know, probably coming up in South Africa, especially that are like, you know, you can go out there and you can pursue the sport and you can do that. You can, you can go all the way to the top and, and be a world champion in the sport. So that's obviously awesome. And and, and so far, Drickers has been able to sort of do some really good work in the UFC, but yeah, for me, looking at this fight, like I'm certainly going to be there on, on the day and I'm going to soak it all in. But man, I've got to rock with Izzy on this one, man. I feel like Izzy's just going to go out there and, and show a whole new level to his game. It seems like he's got that fire back after a bit of a break, got that, you know, got that intent to go out there and, and, and put on a show. And he looks, you know, he looks physically bigger. He looks stronger. He looks like he's faster. So I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to just be enjoying a high level mixed martial arts fight taking place for the middleweight title of the world that is headlined by two African fighters. So it's, it's fucking sick. Like that in itself is, is pretty crazy and pretty, pretty wild. That's, that's how it's sort of shaped up. And obviously there's the storyline going into the fight. There's the, the, the bit of animosity back and forth between the two guys. And well, that always makes for, you know, something more exciting, but I'm rocking with Izzy, man. I feel like he gets the job done and, and gets, you know, the middleweight title back and, you know, adds to his legacy, adds to his game. And then if I'm honest, you look at it, how it pans out, then it sets it up for, for Drickers to sort of either go back to the drawing board and fight some other contenders and earn, you know, earn a, earn a rematch or earn a fight with, you know, with whoever's the champion at, the, at that point, or potentially go up to light heavyweight and, 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 and do work in that way. Cause he's a big guy, man. He's a fucking big guy. So it's always baffling to me to see him make middleweight, but, um, you know, and he's previously fought uh, at light heavyweight as well. So, like, you know, outside the UFC. So And welterweight as well, exciting. mind you. Like, he's, he's, he can go up yeah. or down, like, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's cool, man. Like, obviously, I don't have any, like, disdain towards the guy. Like, he's he's been super, super cool he's, in the interactions I've had with him. And he's, you know, I've got no problem with him, but i got to rock with i got to rock with Izzy. i got to rock with my... Uh, my teammate from CKB in a, in, in a roundabout way that you could say, like obviously, cause there's that close relationship between us and, and CKB. So yeah, I'm rocking with Izzy, man. I feel like he's going to go out there, do his thing and, and, and cement himself even further as, as being an all time great in the sport and definitely like an all time great in the middleweight division. 
Can't wait for it, man. Last one before I let you go too. I know you said that you want to get this job done in emphatic fashion against Rod Costa. You plan on putting him away, uh, certainly to kind of match the performance that you had against him last time. But in terms of just looking at this from an analytical perspective with the matchup, are there any particular keys to victory, do you think, for yourself in terms of getting the job done over Rod? Do you think there's been enough time in terms of any tangible growth from Rod that's going to make the result any different to this one? Or what do you think it takes to get the job done and, uh, and officially put this trilogy to bed? Um, I feel like he's definitely grown since our last fight and I definitely have as well. Um, he has, but at the same time he fights, you know, he's going to come out and fight how he's comfortable fighting. And, 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 and I've, obviously I've, that differs between the two weight classes. Like you see a sort of different cost at, at Bantamweight, a, diff, a slightly different approach to when he fights at Featherweight. Um, but I mean, just looking at it, man, I've just got to use my full skill set and just do what I, you know, do what I know I can do. Um, you know, I feel like I've said it, like Rod's obviously very talented and I've got a lot of respect for him and, you know, his skill set and what he's able to do. But I, like I said it last time, going into the last fight and I've said it before, like I feel like I'm a way more well-rounded mixed martial, mixed martial artist than him. Obviously, he's got power in his hands. I felt it. <laughs> so, you know, I know that. But um yeah, he's obviously a very credentialed grappler. So, uh, but I feel like I'm the better wrestler, right? So I get to dictate where the fight takes place and when it, you know, where, where it sort of goes and when it goes there. So um, I feel like that's a big, a, a big benefit to me and a big boost. But I mean, he better fucking shoot and try and get it to the ground and use his grappling because if he doesn't, I'm going to knock him the fuck out. I'm, I promise I'm going to put this dude away. I'm not coming to have a extended, drawn out fight. Like I'm coming to put hands on him and putting him away. That's so. So that's my plan. No lies detected there, man. We know what a finisher you are. Uh, so let's get it, man. I mean, what a main card this is going to be. Uh, Eternal eighty seven, August seventeen. It goes down at the HBF Stadium in Perth, Western Australia. What a card it is. Like we said, your teammate Seb Salai taking on Dim Skillies for the featherweight title. David Martinez taking on Harry Webb for the lightweight strap. Frank Jankowski versus Colton Kilbasa in the flyweight title uh, fight there. And you and Rod Costa are just on the main uh, on the main card there too, man, a trilogy fight. I mean, that's just, that's a people's main event right there, man. So just an absolutely incredible weekend for mixed martial arts in Australia, all told, uh, right on the eve of the UFC being in town. So much to look forward to. And man, like I said, it's been a long time. Uh, it's been great to have you back on the show here. All the best for Eternal 87, brother. Uh, hopefully for you, it goes your way. I know in your mind it's going your way. So, hey, when you get the job done, man, come back in here. We'll talk about how you got it done and uh, what comes next for you. All the best, man. Thank you.